Hey everybody, welcome to The Realistic Prepper. This is show number 14. I'm Jack McLean, my co-host David Banther. What's up? How's it going, David? It's going all right. Just getting used to this uh, heat here in Florida. Summer started early. so That's not hot there in Florida, is it? Oh no, it's <laughs> freezing cold here. It's freezing. I got the heater on right now, Jack. Uh, I figured you did. Uh, well, today we're going to be talking about something that's very important to everybody, not just what we call preppers, but uh, flashlights and uh, or lights, you know, in general, but flashlights in particular. And it's something that's often overlooked by a lot of uh, a lot of people who should know better. Um, but it, it, it once you don't have it, you, you realize how important it is real fast. And I've had some situations where, you know, the power would be out or whatever for an extended period of time. And, you know, it, during the day, you don't think anything about it. At night, you're glad for every little bit of light you can get your hands on. What, what are your thoughts on it, Dave? I agree. And, you know, oftentimes people in the EDC prepping community, we have all this gear that we love to carry, our guns, our knives. That's the cool whatever. stuff. Yeah. Right. But think about this. If you ain't got no light, you can't use any of that, in theory. So, That's I mean, true. really, I mean, it's it's a staple that ha that goes along with every – it's it's not a staple, I should say. It is a it, – it's an assistant to every other piece of your EDC gear that it's you're a ba It's a base piece of equipment that's necessary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I, I mean, I, I do I – now, I'll be honest. Do I carry one daily? I carry one – well – let me phrase that. One is always near me. Uh, I have one in my bag, everywhere in my office, in my truck, my home. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going out at night, you better believe it's on me. Or if I'm going out in the daytime to an area where I'm going to be inside a lot, mm -hmm. in a large building, you better believe I'll have it. So whenever I, I'm at a risk of needing it, it's always on me. Right. And, and that's the thing. I mean, it, you know, the, the one time you don't have it on you is the time you're going to need it desperately. But uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and say this right up front, and I don't recommend this be your only flashlight that you carry around, but I'm pretty sure most of us have one of these. Yes. Cell phone, this is my, my go-to flashlight right here about 80% of the time. I'll just be honest with you. If I'm just trying to you know, see how to get my keys in the door, see how to unlock my car, uh, um, and look, read something while I'm in the car, a map or whatever. That about eighty to ninety percent of the time, that is my go-to flashlight. Is just my phone. Now, us being preppers, we believe in redundant capabilities. We're firm believers in the the two is one, one is none theory. And preferably, I like to have three of everything on me minimum. I like to have three. I like to have a backup to my backup. Just being uh, what it is, and I'm sure everyone's familiar with Murphy's law. Uh, at least one or two of those is going to go bad or crap out on you. Mm -hmm. And that's just, you know, that's a given. We assume that that's a given, and we prepare for it. And that's what makes us preppers. Uh, but I do carry a flashlight on me daily. I carry a uh, tactical light. It's a, a Streamlight uh, uh, ProTac 2, and uh, it, it runs off of uh, two CR123s, puts out about 260 lumens. Now it, it does have a variable setting, and we're gonna we're gonna have a little show and tell here in a few minutes about what we carry. But I believe in carrying a light on me every single day. Now I don't use that light all the time because that's you know those batteries. If you know about CR one two threes are kind of pricey. Uh, that's not really what it's for is everyday use. So like I said, that's where my cell phone comes in. But uh, just a little bit about what David to reiterate what David was saying. If you don't have a good light, uh, your other capabilities kind of go out the window. I've seen people with um, these uh, well, safety knives. Uh, they're for cutting seat belts and such, right? Well, if you come up to some, if you come up to a wreck and there's an accident, and you don't have a flashlight to see how to cut that, what what good is that knife doing? You? Exactly. you need to have a flashlight to be able to see where you're cutting. Well, let's say in a self defense or home defense situation, you can have the latest tactical. Uh, a weapon with 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 all this stuff and gadgets hanging off of it, and the the most deadly zombie vaporizing ammunition that you can get your hands on. But if you can't see what you're shooting at, what good is it? Exactly. I mean, my home defense gun, like I believe it's your shotgun, Jack, mm -hmm. has a flashlight built on it. So it's again, you know, your home's going to be dark at night. You know, exactly. it's not going to be lit up usually. So exactly. So that that's kind of the theory behind uh, you know behind having a light is it's the fact that you just need one and not necessarily in a tactical situation either. And uh, David and I were talking about this before the show, but in a utility situation, I mean you're going to use your you, your lights as utility lights 
far more than you're ever going to use them, I would assume, far more than you're ever going to use them in any tactical situation. Uh, most of us, I would, I would hope, sincerely hope that most of us will go through our lives, our entire lives, without ever being in a, uh, uh, a situation where we have to use a, a weapon with our flashlights. I hope. Exactly. Um, but, you know, there, there is that possibility. But most of us, for the, for the majority of the time, you're going to use your flashlight for utility tasks. Now, my utility lights, I keep stashed out all over the house. Um, and I know, I know you, you got me beat on the lights cause you got those nice little lanterns we talked about, yes. but I, my little utility lights are about three and a half inches long. They run off one double A battery. This is uh, aluminum. These are uh, Cree ultrafires and they got a little pocket clip on the side as you can see mm -hmm. right there. Uh, it, it's not a, not a bad made flashlight for the price, and I'll get to the price in just a minute, but it runs off, like I said, one AA battery. It has one Cree LED, and it has a pressure pad in the back, uh, yeah. and it has different modes. It has strobe. It has a low impulse and then high. Now, this puts out about 100 lumens, I believe. I could be wrong on that. It, it's pretty bright for what it is, but the great thing about this uh, this little flashlight right here is it was four bucks on Amazon. Four bucks. Yeah. For that price, I can get one for every room in my house. I have one for my get-home bag. I have one dedicated for the car. I have one in my office that I use to work on computers if I need to see inside the system. So just a good little utility light. And the, one of the great things about this is, too, if you're out and about, and let's say you have a flashlight, but your buddy or your wife or whoever's with you doesn't, you can just give them this, and you're what are you out four bucks? You know what I mean. It doesn't exactly. matter if you get it back. Exactly. It doesn't matter if it gets lost. It doesn't matter if it gets thrown overboard in a boat. You're mm -hmm. out four bucks. So it's uh, it's cheap insurance, and it puts out this little light right here. If you're in a lighter colored room, you can turn it on. It'll light the whole room up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, there's there's something to be said about you know you don't have to you know I do have as you'll see and it's some more expensive flashlights but there's something to be said to have these throwaway flashlights I've gone to the um, here in Target when you walk in they have those dollar bins and right right there's those little flashlights I don't know how many lumens they are there's like four LEDs in them or whatever but I buy ten at a time I have one of those in my car right now. I give them out to people. You can keep those in the doors of your car if they fall out. They're a dollar. Mm -hmm. I mean, who cares? The batteries cost more to put in them, um, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, um, why, why well, wouldn't you have this one expensive light? Well, yeah, have that light, but also have lights that you can give away that you can, or, 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 or can be exposed to them. And it's not, it's not, it's not a huge deal. Right. Exactly. And that's, you know, the, the, that's the theory behind a utility light is it's mm -hmm. there when you need it. So I have, like I said, flashlights scattered out all over my house, designated locations. My wife knows where they are. My daughter knows where they are, you know, so we can get to them quickly in a power outage situation. Mm -hmm. You can, most people can navigate their house uh, uh, fairly well in the dark. And I keep my flashlights out where they're, you know, they're easy to get to. Uh, one of these little crees stays on my nightstand. Uh, that's going to be my wife's flashlight in a, uh, uh, a home invasion or self mm -hmm. uh, home defense type situation. I keep one in my office, um, one in the kitchen. And then, like I said, I have one in my go bag and one in my car. Um, now that, that, you know, that, that's not to say, you know, you have to go with, with that brand. We don't necessarily promote any, no. any particular brand cause we don't have, we don't have any sponsors on this channel, no. you know, maybe one day, but we're not that big yet. No. Uh, but you know, this is just items that I have personally used and items that David have used that we have found to be reliable and we found to be a good value for the money. And, uh, we will include a link to these, uh, these little Cree lights in the, uh, in the show notes. You can get them, like I said, on Amazon for about four or five bucks. It does take them a little while to get here because they are brought in from China. Um, but like I said, for the money, good solid little utility light. And another thing that people overlook is, uh, these little headlamps, uh, David, um, I, I forget oh, yes. what's, what, yeah, I think you own a couple of them. I do. And I will show you. I should have got it out so you don't have to see my backside in the video here. But headlamps are very important because, um, again, flashlights are great. But if you're working on something, I won't, I won't model it for you here. I'll spare you that. Okay. <laughs> and I actually have the batteries in reverse in here so they don't go off uh, accidentally. This is um, uh, just 
uh, I got it off Amazon. I think it's the the brand is uh, Northbound Train. It, it's a very good um, uh, headlamp with the various options because if you're working on something like I use them for when I'm outside in the bed of my truck, I'm not having to hold a flashlight with it with a, with one hand. You you just put this on and you know the light goes where where you're headed. So I can't stress enough. The utility of a headlamp, especially in a grid down scenario. Right. If you're working around your house, if you're working outside, you don't want to have one hand tied up. Now, 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 some of these, this one doesn't. I do have a streamline that has a clip for a ball cap, but anyway, guys, get yourself, at least in my opinion, every adult in your household should have a and, headlamp. That and they're not very use. expensive. They're not very no, expensive. No, this is a higher, not a higher one. Well, this is, this one was about 30 bucks. I have a cheaper one in my garage. I got for less than 20. Mm -hmm. um, I will link down below, which are my famous last words here on this podcast, <laughs> to this. Hey, I got, I got all those links for the, for the, now, now podcast. I, I will say on Amazon, you're going to find your great deals. You can probably find a, a, a higher end one for cheap. Uh, if you're in a hurry, you can go to your Walmart, local Walmart, or a, a hardware store, and they'll generally have at least two or three different options. Oh, yeah. They're not going to be good ones, but they're going to be something in the 16 to $20 range that could get you by. And, and this is probably not going to be something you're going to be using day and night. It's, it's probably going to be, you know, yeah. it's going to be a rare use scenario where, you know, like you said, you're, you're going to be outside in the middle of the night moving something uh, or whatever, and you need both hands. And uh, it, it just, it's just a handy little thing to have around. Now, most of the time, those uh, little headlamps, from what I've seen, they run off uh, 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 three AAA batteries. Am I right? Yeah, David? correct. Two Com or three. Commonly available uh, uh, AAA batteries. I recommend having at least six backups. Uh, so at least two changes of batteries in case you are working uh, with, with this headlamp for an extended period of time. Not sure what the battery life is, but I'd say probably at least several hours. All right, David, you had, a, you had a couple of things you wanted to show us as far as utility lights. Uh, yes. So in the same spirit of using the headlamps where that, that keep your hands free, what I've done in my home is I have um, got uh, various lantern-like lights. Now, hey, my, my, my grandmother still keeps the oil light lanterns around. That's not a bad thing to have in prepping. I don't personally want kerosene in my home, so I, I don't do that, but... I do have these battery-powered uh, lanterns. Um, I have a two-story home or condo, so I have these in, a bay, in, in, in probably three areas of the house. This one is the uh, Streamlight, the Siege. It's kind of more tactical um, light, but I keep this one in my truck. I'm a big fan of these because if the power goes out, my wife, who is not very tactical or into this kind of stuff, she knows where these are in the closets. We can immediately get these out, and once these are all once these are all um, illuminated, I don't want to say a good majority of the house is lit, but central areas of the house will then be lit, and we can set this down, and it's lit. You can, and then you can also carry it if you have to go into a specific room, and it's not just one beam of light; it's going to illuminate the entire room. And it's much less dangerous than a candle or, uh, yeah. like you said, kerosene. Having kerosene in your house. I'm not opposed to those things. <clears throat> hey, that's 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 you know prepping 101 really, right. especially in bushcraft type. Not so much bushcraft, but homesteading, mm -hmm. I should say. But you know, I I got a four year old and a one year old that uh, uh, is just crazy. So I cannot have flammable things in my house that can be whacked off. Right. So, right. Um, well, I have a cat, are, and, so I feel. And, and these can also hang in the room. If you're going to be without power for a week, you can take a lantern. <clears throat> Jimmy it with rope and hang it in a room, and you have light in the room. Now, what 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 size batteries does that use, David, and how many? This one, let me see. This one uses D batteries. Size D, okay. D. And uh, let's talk about batteries real quick, Jack, before we get any further in. Okay. Uh, tell me if you disagree with me on this. Um, <clears throat> obviously, folks, um, keep, keep, keep your batteries fresh. If it's a flashlight you don't use often, maybe considering... Keep the batteries outside the flashlight in a Ziploc bag near the flashlight so they don't corrode and, and then ruin your flashlight. Um, test your lights. But it's my theory, it's my goal. And of course, you would never know this for sure until you had to test it. But I keep enough batteries on hand to power my lights, <clears throat> I would say, for two weeks full-blown and or maybe a month on reserve. Meaning, you know, maybe after two weeks, they're not all going to be on, but we will have light. So 
I keep it, especially in hurricane season, folks. Um, I keep enough batteries on uh, 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 on hand to uh, two weeks for sure, and then preferably a month. Uh, pretty much, unless we just get flattened down here by hurricane like Cat Five, and then you're just going to rebuild and move elsewhere. Right. Um, uh, typically, if you're going to be without power, it's going to be for two to three weeks down mm-hmm. here. And so I make sure I have enough battery power to have light for two or three weeks. So that that comes more down to your individual threat assessment. But whatever your threat assessment tells you, you should have the batteries for that. But really, folks, I would think two weeks is a minimum. I, you, I, you, I would you, tend you know? to I, I tend to agree with that. Uh, and and I know you know I know batteries are expensive, but you can uh, you can go to Amazon and you can get really good deals. You can go to uh, uh, places that you wouldn't like Walmart occasionally will have a sale they'll have some kind of run on batteries Sam's Club, Costco, places like that and you can end up getting I think the last time I got 48 AA batteries um, either Duracell or Energizer brand which are both the, the standard name brands um, I believe I paid like 16 or $17 for 48 I mean and it's just you know it, it's cheap insurance 48 batteries uh, and these little lights right here, 48 batteries are going to get me through probably over a month. And, 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 and Jack, I and can't tell cheap. you. Go on, go on. Go ahead. No, I say I just you know, you're saying you're just so correct in how easy it is to. We don't like to use the word stockpile on the show, but to um, uh, to to get what you need and store right. them because I know people. Like I said before, people that don't even prep, prepare, whatever. Mm-hmm. You you know, you ask them for a battery in their home, they're scrounging in the in the drunk drawer for exactly. two double eights. It's exactly, like, and you know, and, and it makes no sense when when they're so easy to come by. And like I said, that the initial hit, you know, paying seventeen dollars for some batteries, it seems expensive, but you got to keep in mind you're not going to be using all these at once. You're you're going to find uses for them. It's not like you're going to have them and oh well, you know, I really don't have any need for these old batteries laying around. No, you, you always need batteries for something, be it a flashlight, a child's toy, uh, uh, an appliance in your house. You always need batteries for something. Uh, so it's just a good practice to keep at least one or two large packs of batteries on hand for the majority of whatever you think you're going to need. Now, the exception to that would be my, my tactical light, which uh, it uses the more expensive CR123 batteries. Uh, now... A lot of people don't like the CR123s because, well, they're so much more expensive than the AA's. But you do get a performance increase on the uh, 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 on the CR123s that you just can't get through the AA's. The lifespan of them is not that long. Uh, in a tactical light, if you're looking at something in the two to 300 lumen range or more, the, the lifespan is probably not that good. But I'll say this, you're not going to be using your tactical light all the time. It's going to be an every once in a while thing, and the light, the the batteries. I just had to replace the batteries in my Streamlight tactical light, mm-hmm. and that's what I that brings us kind of to the tactical lights here. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is my everyday carry. This is with me if I'm dressed, if I'm wearing clothes. Th- this light is with me. It's in my pocket. It has nice. a pocket clip on it. It's uh, 260 lumens on full beam. And then it has a utility beam, which is, I think, 30 lumens. And it also has a uh, strobe. And I'm not going to do it in the camera because it will blind us both right now. But it has a uh, a covered uh, pressure pad in the back where you can do a momentary on or you can do a uh, 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 lock it in and it will stay put. But this is what I carry every day. And you're looking at about a $55 to $60 flashlight. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, that's about where your quality is going to start in a tactical light. Uh, uh, You can get cheaper lights, as I I mentioned, the Crees or whatever. But if you're going to carry this light every single day in a pocket, the wear and tear, you will be surprised how much wear. It's going to get banged on the side of a doorway. You're going to sit on it. You're going to be, you know, it's going to have change rattling around in there. So it's going to kind of go through it. It needs to be durable. It needs to be, if not waterproof, then at least somewhat water resistant. uh, Because you never know when you're going to be out. You know, if you're in a car accident, whatever, you're out in the rain. uh, You never know. So it needs to be at least water resistant. If If you can't drop this in the toilet and pull it back out and still use it, it's not that good of a tactical light. Um, And and I would say generally speaking, as far as your tactical lights go, your quality is going to start at about the fifty dollar range. Mm-hmm. Well, what are your thoughts on that, Dave? 
I agree. Um, and again, we, 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 you know, kind of start talking about, you know, more affordable lights that you want to keep to throw away, which are good, but then your, your daily driver or your go-to flashlights really need to be north of $50. Exactly. Um, for myself, in my, uh, my, because I have to, you know, um, my work clothes limit my EDC. So I have my, I have kind of my EDC bag or my man purse, as, as I affectionately call it, it has most <laughs> of my gear in there. Hey, it, it works. It does. And there I carry a uh, Phoenix PD35. So this is a pretty cool flashlight. Forgive me, I cannot tell you the the lumens on it, but it's very bright. I would say you're pushing uh, probably just south of 500. So I'm sure oh, someone nice. will uh, correct me. I, I would say about three or 500, so somewhere in that range. But that has a button right here where you can adjust the brightness. So I can have it dim. Or extremely bright. So no, no, very... no, uh, David. A lot of people don't don't understand. They may not understand what the what the different modes are about. Uh, it's kind of like this: if you're going to use a light such as the one David's got there, if you're going to try to read a map up close, you'll want to set that on the lowest possible setting, so you're you're not completely blinded. Because if you turn that thing on at 500 lumens and it's pitch mm -hmm. black to look at a sheet of paper, you're going to be completely blind. Yeah, and you also might not want people to know your presence. Exactly. So, another reason. So, that's that's in my bag. And then, um, like I said, when I leave the house at nighttime or if I'm going to be gone during the, the, the day in a building where it could get dark, um, I carry a very small uh, Streamlight Stylus Pro. I have one that's half this size as well. This looks like a pen, so in an office environment, I mean, this is TSA friendly. This is I've got this through all types of security. It's perfectly fine. It's not the brightest thing in the world, but um, in a pinch, it's going to help you find what you what, what you need. And What's that, and, about 30, 30 to 50 lumens? Uh, max. 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 Um, and so, I so, also, so that one's probably, uh, on its setting, that's probably the equivalent to that other one on its low setting. Correct, correct. So this is what uh, I use. I um, mean, again, I have one that's, uh, I think it's called the Micro Stream. Mm -hmm. That's about literally half the size of this. But I prefer this because it stands up better inside my pocket um and then if, if, if i may a little cool flashlight now this fits the definition of tactical not so much tactical right. okay but um this gerber flashlight that i have here okay uh let me see here i have the specs to give you it is the gerber free skate flashlight now it is tactical which means you know it's more for flash than utility but it is a really cool flashlight has a different design with different pressure points to hold. It's very easy to hold. It's more of a triangle shape. Has a uh, carabiner type belt clip at the end. Not a, not a belt clip built in, but you can you know hook something on right, here. Right, right. And what's cool about this is it has this it has a regular flashlight mode, and then it has that um, red light. Okay. Um, and what this does is, and when Jack mentioned about reading a map. This is what brought this up. This um, is very good to use when you need to see where you're going or what you're doing, but don't want somebody seeing where you are. Maybe somebody sleeping next to you. You don't want to light up, light up the, the the entire room, or like Jack said, blind yourself while you're while you're reading a map. Right. The the red light is supposed to uh, preserve your night vision. So in other words, if you're uh, uh, if you're reading a map and you use a white light, what happens is the retina in your eye, the, the pupil, actually will shrink down. So it's not letting in all that light. And then when you turn the light off, well, they're shrunk, and it's going to take a few minutes for your night vision to come back as your, your pupils widen up. Well, if you use a red light, the theory behind the red light is it doesn't affect your night vision as well. So you could be reading a map with that red light and then turn it off, and your night vision is still there. So... Exactly, and I, it's so um, I keep this one in the way in my truck, and in my truck I also keep a different. It's a similar type flashlight um, attached to my visor as my uh, Phoenix flashlight here. But one thing to, to say, even warns you on here, some of these lights where you start getting north of 500 lumens, um, they're extremely hot. Oh yeah, towards, towards the end. I mean, you will the one in my Definitely. truck. Um, I almost wish I had um, demoed it before I bought it because it's, I mean, even in a handle part, it gets hot, to, hot mm -hmm. to the touch um, just because it's so, so bright. I, I had mine activate in my pocket. This is my little stream light, and uh -huh. it's only only 260 lumens, but I actually uh, accidentally activated it in my pocket once, and uh, it uh, it actually, 
I don't know how long it was on for, but I felt my leg was on fire and I and it almost burnt a hole in my leg. And when I took it out, it was so hot I couldn't handle it. I had to throw it down on the floor and just let it sit there until it cooled off a little bit. Uh, you got to be careful with that. And like you said, uh, you know, the, something like this is where that starts. But once you get up into the four and five, six hundred lumen, I've seen I've seen some nowadays that go up to a thousand lumens. Uh, you, you may ask yourself, well, why would anybody want a flashlight that would go five hundred to a thousand lumens if you're not going to be able to use it close up? That's not really what it's for. A night like that is more of your outdoor. Uh, you, you need to spotlight something from 100 yards away or more. Uh, uh, searching through the woods maybe, search and rescue. Uh, more like a floodlight than it is a, a, a close-up flashlight. So just be careful of those. Uh, if you turn one on, don't leave it sitting in front of a stack of newspaper or whatever. You might have a fire on your hands in a couple of minutes. Well, so, would you like to see my 900 lumen flashlight? I would like to see your really? 900 lumen flashlight. Um, and I had, to, I had to actually look up to verify the lumens. Um, so hopefully the website was telling me correctly. Again, uh, guys, I'm not a flashlight pro. I have lights, as we described when we need them on here, but I'm not a flashlight pro. This is what stays in, in my nightstand. Oh, nice. This is, is the Through Night uh, Catapult V3, okay? And it is uh it is around nine hundred lumens, and, um, and and it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty. This <laughs> actually the urban prepper who I strongly suggest that you subscribe to his YouTube channel. He actually did a mini uh, mini test on this flashlight, and he was crushing watermelon with the with the bezel of this light. I mean, if you were hit in the face with this flashlight, I mean, this would do some serious damage. But um, basically, and I'll kind of go off to the side. This flashlight right here. Um, and you can adjust it with this, right, by, by it turning it, it goes to a strobe mode. If you're strobe with that, I mean, even right now, me looking at it against the wall, uh, hurts my eyes. Um, so what this is great for, again, in my home, yes, if there was a power outage at night, I would grab this. Mm -hmm. but like I said, um, my, uh, uh, home defense gun has a flashlight built on, but, uh, where I live, the back is uh, uh, f faces the river that goes up to the water. Lots of swamp and marsh, and um, there's been times I've heard stuff out there, and I'll go out on the, on, the, on the top balcony, shine this out there, and it lights up almost the entire lagoon behind my condo. So now, now what kind of batteries do you use, Dave? Uh, this uh, I believe this is CR one two three, but um, don't quote me, and I will link down below to this flashlight. I think I think it was this flashlight. You can have um, different options as um, uh, what kind of you can do like um, the, the, so many CR one two threes or more of or another the, the brand. longer the longer version the uh, yeah. like eleven eighty seven or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, but yeah it's um, definitely you know not the cheapest flashlight to run mm -hmm. but. Uh, Check cool. it out. I, I've never really gotten to use it yet. I mean, I've used it in testing, obviously, like I said, the, out of my lagoon, but never long term. And it comes with a nice belt uh, holster type, type thing here. So if you were working in law enforcement and were allowed to carry your own light or working in security of any kind at night, this would be an excellent – this is the replacement to um, – well, the name slipped my mind, Jack. Those, those big old ones. The, the, the mag big, lights. The mag lights. I, I, I used to carry. I used to carry one of those as a correctional officer. Yeah. It, it put out probably, I would say one tenth of the light that that puts out. It put out about one tenth of that light, and it weighed about fifteen pounds. So I, I remember carrying one of those daily. Yeah. But uh, no, I mean, as far as brands go, don't 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 misunderstand. We're not dissing uh, on the mag light. Uh, the, the mag lights. They they put out some good lights for what they're intended for. Uh, they're, they're decent utility lights. It's just that technology has come a long way uh, uh, since those. Uh, we have LEDs now. We have, uh, like I said, the CR123 uh, battery technology now, uh, the lithium ion. Uh, it, it's just that technology has come so far now, it, it's almost made those types of lights obsolete. Um, it takes four, Jack. It takes four uh, CR123s. CR so, uh, you know, as far as brands go, we, we don't, we, we're not going to pimp out any particular brands here, but I will, I will name off a few quality uh, brands. Through Night is a, is a really good brand. Uh, four Sevens, mm -hmm. uh, Sure, Surefire, 
Streamlight, th those are the four brands that immediately come to my mind. That uh, and and I'm sure there are many others out and, there. Like and, David, and Gerber has some fun lights. Gerber yeah. has some fun lights. Some right? fun lights. And, and I'm not, you know, we're we're not knocking any particular brand. Those are just the brands that I have personal experience with that I can attest are good quality. And and the brands that David has experience mm -hmm. with. Again, we're not flashlight guys. Um, no. We don't collect flashlights. We we don't you know we, we we don't collect them to collect. We collect a few to use, and and, and there's a difference. Uh, you know we, we don't really get into the uh, you know all the all the ins and outs and the the particular aspects of it. You know I I, I I know what lumens mean and I know what you know some of the functions and features are, but I'm not that much into it. And if it's a good high quality light in or do what I need it to do, that's all I really care about. Exactly. In the end, guys, something is better than than, than nothing. And, um, you know, have your whole system down. I have everything, you know, from, and we didn't really touch on this, but the little keychain lights. I have oh, my yeah. little keychain light here, you know, $6 from Home Depot, all the way up to my $100 catapult light. And then my lanterns in between, my Phoenix, my Gerber, <clears throat> my, uh, you know, Streamlight Stylus Pro. So all, all, all various levels here, you, you, what you want to do is build like a system for yourself, starting in the smallest area, then working your, working your way up, having it fit your specific threat assessment, fit your EDC lifestyle, and make sure you know, yes, always have the go-to light in each category. That's going to be the higher dollar. Right. But make sure you have those cheaper throwaway exactly. lights to give to family, friends, and if they break, then who cares? Exactly. And, and and having a system, like you said, where you always have a light around, that's very important. You touched on that. Um, for instance, as I sit here right now uh, in my home, I have access to eight or nine flashlights of various types and quality. Um if I'm in my car, if you ever see me out in my car, I will have immediate access to five flashlights just in my car. Wow. And I mean, not just not just dedicated flashlights. I'll have this one on me. I will have one of these in my console. I'll have another one of these in my uh, get home bag. Plus, I have a uh, micro light like you were just showing the pressure pad activated. I believe mine is, uh, I'm trying to think of the name brand now. It is it is the popular name brand in those. I can't I can't think of it right now. But basically, it's a pressure pad activated keychain light, or it has a switch on it. I think it's like thirty lumens, but it it does the job. I'll have one of those in my uh, I have one of those clipped to the inside of my bug out bag. That way, I can actually see the contents without having to break out my higher power light. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, I'll have my cell phone with me. Like I said, every, every, just about everybody has a, a cell phone nowadays, and that is a, another flashlight right there. So I'll have at least five flashlights on me, uh, any, any or around me, anytime you see me out. And even if I'm away from my vehicle, I'll still have this light, and I'll still have this light. So I have redundant capabilities. Something happens to one of these, I still got a light. Absolutely, you're. No, we don't think. Well, not that we don't think of it. We do, but. This is your your your, the, your cell phone. I'm sure Android's similar. Your 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 cell phone can be number one, right? And then build your system on up. Exactly. Well, I think that about covers it for today, David. Uh, I think we may have a close up show and tell video at the at the end of this. I will tack mm -hmm. it on to the end for the uh, people watching on YouTube. Uh, for yeah. the people listening on iTunes, uh, you just kind of miss out because uh, we we tack some little goodies on at the mm -hmm. end of these videos. You might want to mm -hmm. check it out. Uh, okay. If you have any questions or comments, uh, look us up on Facebook at The Realistic Prepper. And look us up on, a, if you want to send us an email, it's uh, the Realistic Prepper Podcast at gmail.com. And I appreciate everybody watching. See you next so, yeah. time. All right, guys. Here we have a close up show and tell. I guess you could say uh, my flashlights that I keep around the house and on me. This is the Cree Ultra Fire, and uh, it has one LED. It is aluminum construction, as you can see. It has a pocket clip on it. Um, it has a textured uh, button in the back, a little rubber button in the back. It's pressure activated. Uh, one click, hold it down, it'll stay on. Second click goes to strobe and third click is a low beam so it has three different settings on here these can be had on amazon.com for about four or five dollars a piece i believe 
and I have uh, one of these in my get home bag, one in my car, and several uh, scattered out around my house. So next up we have my everyday carry light. This is a stream light, uh, Protac 2L. And this uses, uh, I meant to mention it before, the Ultra Fire over there uses one AA battery. This uh, stream light here uses two CR123 batteries. Um, these can be had for around $45 to $50 depending on where you get yours. It is also a pressure pad activated as you can see. And it also has different modes. Steady on, strobe, and low beam. So... That is the Streamlight. I highly recommend Streamlight. The only problem I have had with this light is that the pocket clip will sometimes come off if the, the pants are really thick. They will sometimes pop off, uh, but it will just fall down in your pocket, so no, uh, no real worries there. But um, that's the only complaint or gripe I've had about this particular flashlight. And that is my everyday carry uh, tactical light. Next up we have an example of another utility light this is the photon micro light and uh, there are several imitations of this uh, several knockoffs make sure you get the real legit photon micro light uh, you can change the batteries out in this uh, you notice there are four screws on the bottom there and you can take the batteries out and replace those and it's pressure activated it's about 30 lumens but also there's a little switch right here and if you click that it'll stay turned on so it comes in really handy I keep this uh, strapped to the inside of my uh, get home bag just so I can see the contents of the get home bag without having to pull another flashlight out and uh, that is the photon micro light these can be had on amazon.com for about I want to say 12 to 15 dollars depending on what source you get them from just make sure you get the real thing with the metal clip uh, genuine brand not the cheap knockoffs anyway guys that's just a general overview of the flashlights that I carry and use on a daily basis and thanks for watching